now it is. Now you're recording? <coughs> now we're recording. I'm blue. Hey, everybody. Sorry. It's all right. Yeah. Gotta get those drinks in. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Oh, one thing I wanted to talk about, um... Or who are you? Well, doing, uh, doing stuff like... Why don't we ever do, like, intro things? Like, uh, where we just ramble on, like, uh, something that can go before the intro to the video? Like, you know how we did the whole <laughs> villain thing? The, something before the intro. The yeah. intro intro? Well, yeah, so, I mean, before, like, the intro clip that I roll, like, we should do, like, uh, like, if we are talking about, like, uh, rewarding. Like, yeah, yeah, on this episode we're talking now, uh, rewarding our player, and, like, start f***ing up shit, and then, like, go to the intro, and they're like, alright, yeah, we're talking, uh... Okay. Oh, good! <laughs> Hey everybody! <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, how do we start this again? Welcome back to uh, Roll Heroic. I'm so bad at this channel. starting these off all the time. Yeah, welcome back to Roll Heroic. I'm Nick. I'm Andrew. Clean and shaven. Clean shaven Andrew. Yeah, we're talking uh, a I'm few done, things today. Yeah, I'm done being the werewolf. Yep. Although this is still pretty, pretty bad. Um, so. We got one topic we're yeah, going to touch on, and then it's just going to go all over the right place. Yeah, we're just going to you know, go with it. We already talked about Railroad, so let's get off of it a little bit. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, let's talk about rewarding your players in tabletop RPGs. Yep. What do you mean by that? Well, like, uh, you know, um, what do you give your players as uh, as motivation to roleplay, play the game, show <laughs> up to a session, whatever? Uh, so, like, what do we reward for, basically... In a tabletop RPG. Anyway, for uh, what do we reward for? I, I think like a couple topics, uh, like good role playing, right? Like defeating monsters, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, so in combat. The good role playing part. Um, what are you rewarding for good role play? Are you going out <clears throat> inside of what you were planning on giving in the session to begin with? The um, additional stuff. Well, if you're planning on like giving experience points, right, uh, for good role play, which you should be doing. I don't um, know. See. I that's I'm, actually I'm, a really I'm good. On the I'm on I'm okay. on board with so XP we have, for we have, we have, this is this, we don't we don't clash too much on on things on this show. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a good one. So you think you should reward good role playing with that experience? With, with experience, I think so. Okay. How much? Oh, not much. Um, probably like uh, 10, 15 percent of what you were going to give them anyway. Maybe twenty, maybe, maybe a quarter worth of the session's XP. If they, you know, okay. as a bonus, so, and not all the time, not like if you, like every session, if you're role playing, you're getting that bonus. Let's, do, let's do but this. If it's a yeah. solid session where role play was just heavy, it's like, just throw some extra. Now are you talking in. as a group or individuals? Oh, well, I don't like to, well, there's another thing, rewarding. That's what, that's what I thought Rewarding as an individual player or as a, yeah. I think if you're going to reward an individual player with, uh, because of their role play, you should probably do so with inspiration. Not, yeah. Like in five. Okay, if so we're talking now, 5e, we're, now we're on the same page again. For a second, for a second, I thought you were gonna say if Bob is a better role player than no, Sally, no, 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 Bob no, gets no, experience no. and Sally doesn't. No, okay. that's not what I said. I have but, played yeah, in games yeah. like that mm. where, um, <laughs> actually there was there was two games I played in that one. Um, some players got a lot of experience for mm. role playing over others. And then a different one, so it was minuscule, and it was just kind of like, huh, you know, and it was like five, ten experience extra, which never would have done anything for yeah, you. Yeah. Um, but I'm totally not for that. Like the giving someone more experience because they're a better role player. I'm like, yes, you should encourage role playing as much as you can, but that can get really, really dicey, and like the feel bads could come out. Yeah, no, I don't support uh, rewarding individual players um, for something like that. Because, like, I mean, you get new players all the time that just haven't come out of their role-playing shell yet. It's kind of, it's tough for some people. It's not like it's, uh, and, and it's not really that necessary to play the game. Yeah. So, um, but if they, if, what I mean is if the group is role-playing well together and you have a solid session like that, I think it's okay to, to give them some extra, so, something extra, you know. If, yeah. if if I mean you got to recognize too when a, when the group wants to role play, but sometimes they just have a hard time getting into it, right? Um, you want to like chase the you want to reward them and chase that uh, you want to motivate them to do it further. Um, 
I myself don't really care too much if there's heavy role play in a session. I like doing I, as a player. I love to try to get into role play as much as I can. I'm not the not very I'm not always the best at it, you know. Um, but when I do find a character that I really like, it's easier. So I, you know, I like to promote that as much as I can, um, and re- I'd like to reward it. Yeah. yeah so I, I would agree then. Um, giving an extra experience out for role playing as a group isn't a bad thing. Um, if you're making that let no, like, that's kind of tough too. Like, well, you guys, you guys were good role players this session. Everybody gets an extra 200 experience. Or, you guys didn't really role play this session. No extra experience. Uh, that's kind of, yeah, that's, <laughs> that kind of feels weird. Yeah. And that's, not, um, that's not what I was getting at. But you I know, it. I know, but it's, it's hard to quantify <clears throat> find that. Um, for me, rewards always come down to, um, I kind of come from a, uh, I didn't really play past before third edition, so I played a little bit of third edition, a lot of three point five, and a lot of the groups I had is if it's not nailed down, we're taking it. But if it is nailed down, we brought crowbars, and so we would steal, or not necessarily steal, but we would take mm-hmm. anything we could possibly salvage mm-hmm. out of any sort of dungeon or ruin, and so. Um, but on top of whatever treasure we were getting off of monsters or getting yeah. to the end of um, a difficult like mm-hmm. encounter or you keep. Were, you were being rewarded with loot throughout the year. We were creating yeah. loot where yeah. there wasn't any. <laughs> oh, look, there's this marble statue. How do we get that back to town? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to buy a marble statue? I'm like, I don't know. Maybe we yeah. just put and our the, name on it. And, and the DM's <laughs> just sweating. Like, oh my God, they're going to be so loaded. Yeah, or like, you know, you have the, the ranger that wants to dissect every monster you killed and break it into magical ah, yeah, components yeah, yeah, yeah. or yeah. god forbid it has that that creature was venomous because mm-hmm. now they're gonna have it uh, or they're going to try to have it and yeah. then sell that or use it mm-hmm. and they, they always want to know like like down to what the pieces are like what the part of the animal is it's yeah just, it's crazy so it's, it's really funny because it almost goes like in an order like you kill this monster the ranger's like well i'm going to mm. cut it up and then someone's like well is it edible and then some then like the wizard asks are there any magical components like it always kind of like goes yeah. in that order it's like a, a whole brew <laughs> level of depth yeah. to the yeah. whole can we eat it again. is it worth money yeah. <laughs> so yeah. um one thing for rewards uh, and I mentioned to you this um, before we started uh, through a text when we were talking about topics, is um, realistic versus the video game loot. Yeah. And that, to me, is where this whole random tables in the DMG mm-hmm. like, really fall apart. Yeah. So you kill this orc, and you search through his stuff, mm-hmm. he should have what an orc would have on yeah. him. Not an average mook having a... Oh, he's got some sort of rare legendary weapon. Yeah. Oh, he's got a potion of flying. Yeah. Well, why didn't he effing yeah. drink it? It's like, you know? <laughs> don't, don't give your average mooks uh, Diablo loot. Diablo loot. <laughs> oh, rare spawn, you know? Yeah. Because, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, if a bad guy has a magic item that's even remotely worthy in combat, they should be using it against the party. Yeah. And I actually really like that, is that when, when, when I have a party come up against, um, not necessarily like a like the big bad guy but like some sort of like boss orc or head of the raiders or or something Mm -hmm. giving that guy a couple pieces of magical loot that make him stronger is you know then the player's like oh you know like let's like oh and i I described like the raider's sword flashes green as he hits you Mm -hmm. take take an extra d6 poison and they're like oh crap he's got a magic sword you know some people get excited, some people are like, now we take him more seriously, and we know we're getting something for killing him. You know, so I like to use the loot yeah. in with the encounters. Yeah, yeah, so, and so, yeah, so do I. I like to just make, like, is, if you're going for a realistic um, loot, uh, treasure, things like that, I like to make sure that it makes sense to be there, that kind of thing, yeah. Um, you know, a, like a, an orcs, uh, an orc chieftain might have, like, you know, if he's running a band of orcs, right, like a band of banded orcs or whatever, uh, it makes sense that he would probably, like the chieftain would have like the best of the shittiest swords that that group has, yeah. right? You know, uh, he's probably the strongest orc and uh, he would have the better of the swords out of all the orcs, right? So, um, I recommend taking it like in that situation. So, the orc chieftain, doesn't just have a plus one sword. Mm-hmm. Which is a big deal. Yeah, anyway, the Lord Chief has yeah. a um, 
like an ornate sword with a lion head pommel. Mm -hmm. um, it's still razor sharp, yeah. even though it looks like it has many, yeah. you know, little dents across the mm -hmm. the blade. And like, to give give your magic weapons a little bit of a history yeah. to them. Yeah. Um, and it don't even need to be a magic weapon. It don't need to be a plus one. Oh yeah, just get a plus sword. one. Just be, you don't need to make a plus one weapon to hook your players into wanting that sword. Like you yeah. give it a little bit of history, a little bit of depth, um, something mm -hmm. more interesting, some flair to it. And they're gonna go after that. And think it's well, I could sell this. I could. I'll find somebody that wants this piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you yeah. give a rogue a dagger mm -hmm. and a dagger with a pommel that has a big ruby in it. <laughs> You know they're gonna yeah. want the ruby pummel one and mm -hmm. keep that one, yeah. or, or try to hawk the ruby out of it. You know, yeah. you could even play off your uh, players' backgrounds, their character backgrounds, and like if something might be interesting to their character, you can just make sure one of those, you mm -hmm. know, uh, one of those minions that that's laying on the floor has it. You know, yeah. has something that's at least familiar to them, maybe from the land that they came from, anything like that. Right. Um, a friend of ours, Josh, actually ran a campaign where. Um, we ended up finding, you weren't in this one, mm -hmm. um, we ended up finding an old uh, dwarven mine and one of the rooms had some pristine um, dwarven weapons that were at that point like hundreds and hundreds of years old and um, they weren't magical weapons but um, they were really old and he described to the dwarven player that you recognize the, um, the smith mark and everything from a certain clan. It was just it was this really cool thing that dealt with his background, that he kind of knew who these people were that made these weapons, and so he kept them. Like, and they were just regular weapons, but they were dwarven made, and they were from a smith family that he knew, and so mm -hmm. he kept them personally because it was like something kind of like little entwined into his concept. That was yeah. kind of cool. I like when when DMs go to that depth of mm -hmm. you know throwing something together. Um, yeah, so we, we talked a little bit about, uh, I guess we went right into kind of what, what are good rewards, I suppose, but uh, um, I mean, you can even reward lore and information, things like that. Like, you don't necessarily need to reward something that's worth a an amount of money, right? Well, and see, that's... Like, like a wizard, a wi I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously, like a, a scroll or a tome or something is like a spell scroll or something is worth money, but a wizard might also be interested in information lore stuff like that too like i know josh is like he always wants books whether or not they have mm -hmm. any sort of magical properties or whatever he wants information yeah that was his his yeah. little character hook he was kind of a yeah and um yeah so like that's a reward you can come up with too or at least you make sure that you have rewards like that to cater to specific characters mm -hmm. right um, making custom items, magical items in particular for characters can be a little bit um, dangerous. Dangerous, <laughs> yeah. Ask me how I know. I think you've heard this story. But, uh, <laughs> you don't really need to revisit <laughs> the the Pearl of Doom, oh, the Doom okay. Nugget. That was a, um, yeah. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I've made some that have been really, really strong in the past. Um, I've given out some. I've given out stuff that is like really mediocre, but character or players have absolutely loved. Um, one was I gave a, I gave a book that basically, uh, for, for, for fifth edition, it allowed a player to make a wand and the wand, all it did is when you made it, you choose a color mm -hmm. like green, blue, red, purple, yellow, whatever. And then whenever you casted a spell, the spells were all tinted that color. Mm. So if you casted a fireball and you had the blue wand, you're, it was a blue fireball. And that's all it did. It didn't make it yeah. harder to, to dispel. It didn't make it do extra mm -hmm. damage. It was just, that's all it was. It was a party favors book. It was like a like a mm -hmm. kid's magic book is what it was. <laughs> and the player thought it was the coolest thing ever. And he, made, and he actually spent the extra like ritual gold to make a bunch of different colors at once. Mm -hmm. Pointless, but cool. Yeah. That's my favorite kind of loot. Yeah. Pointless but cool. Yeah, and just chase the interests of your players. Yeah. yeah, like the flagon of ale that never runs out. It almost becomes easier for a DM if like you have players like that. And you're like, oh, I yeah. don't have to really crunch the numbers here. <laughs> just gotta give them colors. <laughs> just gonna give you this random thing that I know has no like power level mm -hmm. ba and balancing, but you're gonna love it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, you can go as far as class items. Uh, what do you think about like um 
why I suppose this goes into like milestone type, you know, level ups and instead versus giving XP for rewards, um, standard standard rewarding. Um, but what do you think about like like a uh, party does such a great job at an encounter that you're like, well, at, you know, do you ever find yourself like, well, this session you guys earned that next level, you know? Um, so when I first started running d and I ran, this kind of goes more like how you want your campaign to go, but mm -hmm. when I first started running D&D, &D, it was really by the book, this is how much experience you got, plus the like the encounters and um, stuff you guys solved, divided e evenly, whatever, and that's done. And then for a long time, I went to um, a milestone, which was, you know, when you get to a certain part of the campaign, you're leveling up. Mm -hmm. And now, when it comes to D&D, &D, um, I'm going back to the hardcore experience layout. Because I felt like Milestone was just, and this is just me, this is my personal, this isn't dissing anybody else, but I felt Milestone was me being lazy. <laughs> you know? Because yeah. it was really easy to mm -hmm. say, okay, I don't want you guys to level yet. I want to run through all of this um, low-level monsters and encounters that I want to do. Mm -hmm. And then I'm ready for the next yeah. step and level you up. I feel um, like XP is, it's not only taxing on the DM, but it's super taxing on the party. Oh, like, yeah. Like it's, it's way easier to tell a party, okay, you guys are now level three from yeah. level two. Mm -hmm. And then you don't have to worry about writing it down in their sheet mm -hmm. and adding it up. And like, We know 5e can be like, this can be a little stale at level one and two. You know, until you get third. Yeah. And you really in, early level, in early levels, there can be some games where even if you're role playing heavy, um, what's an appropriate amount of experience when you only did one encounter because you guys were hanging out with the Duke all day, yeah, you know? Yeah, well, if you got a lot done in that encounter, you know, if you spent if you spent six hours at the table just hard role-playing with one combat encounter in there, you, you need some XP. Yeah, <laughs> and that's where the milestone thing yeah. is more mm -hmm. attractive than... Plus, if you're, only giving, if you're only giving experience points for combat, you're really... Well, it's true, you push but... In combat in that game. You should be giving experience points for all sorts of different encounters. Mm -hmm. But how much experience points do you give for role-playing? Yeah. Especially when it's role-playing that you as the DM mm -hmm. wasn't planning, but the party decided to steer your boat that way. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. How much experience do you give for them mm -hmm. wanting to talk? Especially to if they didn't risk their character's life in the role-play, right? You know? Yeah. Didn't, didn't get to that point. And sometimes in those role-playing sessions, it's only two... Like one or two characters that are steering that. Mm -hmm. The other ones are like, okay, where is our fight? Yeah. Like, that's what I'm here for. So some players are here just to, you know, combat. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's the different kinds of players, you know, the role play heavy, the combat guys, the yeah. people that like to be in the face, the people that just want to crunch the well, numbers. And your party needs the guys that, that want to kill the monsters and they need the guys that want to talk to the NPCs. You know, you kind of... Yeah. Um, and sometimes you get a party where everybody does it all. Sometimes mm -hmm. you get it where it's split. And, and then you can have some you... nights where the guy that wants to talk doesn't want to talk. Yep. You know, you he, he just you know, he just wants to, to roll get... dice on people's faces. Yeah, yeah and uh, yeah, you shouldn't but yeah, and you should should not be like yeah, rewarding certain players for certain things and not the others, right? Like yeah. if you if you have a player that isn't all of a sudden one night just isn't feeling it, isn't role playing, like you don't, yeah, you don't leave that person out on rewards, right? On Have you ever point. had um, anybody in, I guess, I don't know how extensive your um, game campaigns have gone when we weren't around, mm -hmm. um, but if you have anybody that's tried to role play for an advantage, like either through their background, like try to create an advantage where there wasn't one, um, it's a common, like, RPG trope that happens in, like, where someone writes in their background that they are like the son of a oh, noble, that, that's what you're talking but about. they're not actually this. Yeah, you know, there's no merit mm -hmm. to it. Yeah. Um, then they try to role play that advantage into the game. Yeah, I mean, like uh, folks that were, you know, I was a uh, member of a thieves guild, uh, so I'm, you know, I know where all this stuff is in the city. Yeah. Uh, all of a sudden, you just came up with, you know, yeah. um, things like that. Um, but not much, but a f you know, a few things. It's usually like rogue players or, um, I think even one wizard player at the time, but, um, 
if you're, you're talking about uh, yeah, as an unadvantage, not not like fifth edition, you're giving them advantage. Yeah, no, no, a player. player trying to create their own yeah, benefit like, yeah. through their background. I mean, story. a couple times. Um, that's that, tough. Definitely not with our the, with, with the this group. Yeah, it, it's it's tough because then you have like someone's trying to get something for nothing. Yeah, you know, when I don't know. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a total mm -hmm. side yep. topic. And, there, and, and sometimes it's it's hard to remember. Like if you're starting like a level one, yeah, we're going on to different stuff now. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you're going, if you're gonna like make a level one character um, in five e, and uh, you give them, it's like, well, I've been a master thief in the guild for <laughs> for uh, like ten years now, and I finally just decided to leave the guild and go out adventuring. But I do know all the ins and outs. You know, it's like you're a level one character, dude. You're a level one character, you're just getting your feet wet. You're not a master level. You're, you're 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 slightly better than the average guard <laughs> in yeah. the town. You know, you're slightly better at combat. Um, yeah, the town is why you're ready yeah. to get out and go adventuring. The stray dog that runs around town is a threat to you. Yeah, Le level three, <laughs> level three, you're like a little force to be reckoned with in town. Yes, but, but you're still not like you know. Yeah. So it's really funny. We're going back to rewards. A level one character. This is just kind of weird to think about, but a level one character finding a suit of plate mail mm. is like amazing. It's yeah, like, well, yeah. it's like yeah. the, the stupid proportionate thing, like because like when you're like level like six and seven, finding a finding a suit of plate mail is like, ah, oh, this is really heavy. We have to look it back to town to sell it. But like when you're level one, we find a suit of plate mail. The paladin's like, oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> so it's funny. I always I just thought it was funny with like with even with uh, like video games and stuff like like Diablo or like any game that drops loot, right? Uh, like knowing a little bit about like real armor it's kind of it's always been a funny thing to me that uh it's like every set of armor i find i'm, I'm just lucking out it's like everybody's been my size you know it's like <laughs> like everybody's been five ten you know oh, that's all see that's another thing that really is like hard to it doesn't matter it's it's a fantasy game i know but it's, but it's always something that like just kind of makes me chuckle inside we know? want to take the plate mail from from that like um the orc warlord and you mm -hmm. want to put it on your dwarf and it's like it really shouldn't fit yeah well and i think but, i've used it in the past too with i think uh the last campaign i run um i think i, I mentioned a couple times some things like well the armor that was on this man it's like it's clearly tailored for himself you know mm -hmm. like like that i think i've mentioned that before so it's like well i mean you could take it but you might not want to wear it you, yeah. you know stuff like that and and some players get really want like a more realistic kind of thing but no, I don't think it's very common, but you do yeah. you do hear stuff online about like how to make D and D more realistic, things like that. But and see, I don't. And that's um, a, okay, this is, this is a different. How, how do you how do you support? How do you if you're gonna make D and D realistic? How do you like do any sort of reward system? <laughs> you know? I really yeah. don't think you should be. Your goal should not be to make D and D realistic. I don't think so. And I love I, it I is, love realistic medieval stuff yeah like it in, is in the facts and stuff but i i would never try to put that in my game the game mechanics <laughs> for D D, and people might argue with me with me on this but the game mechanics in D D, you should you're not aiming for realism at all mm -hmm. i mean there, there's, there's so many things that does not make sense for realism yeah. like how many arrows a person can take mm -hmm. and i understand like the argument that hit points aren't literally you getting hit like it's but mm -hmm. It's never portrayed that way, like in the descriptions or and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's a whole other. God, like, that's a monster. Like, this is just a. That's a monster. We're gonna be all. You have to just that's title a, this episode. You bear with us. Maybe. Tabletop blender stuff. Maybe rewards in there. Yeah. That, well, I, you know, that's what I'm gonna. I'll, I'll. I'll do something. We'll do something. <laughs> <laughs> Put something there. Um, yeah. but it's Sunday. We needed to shoot a video, so we're getting together and do something. Yeah, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Have you ever ran a ran a uh, a campaign where they have come across the dragon horde? Um, I don't think I've run a campaign where I've actually sent a dragon. Those have to be an actual dragon. I'm talking about where they found the oh, pile like, of treasure. Like, no, never. Um, I've never even been a part of a campaign that has come across that much treasure. I had it one time. Um, where it was kind of funny describing it all because um, the party is basically tracking this this thief, this bandit that mm. had stolen um, something from the king, and uh, they find the bandit's hideout, and he's by himself. He's a one-man show, and his hideout is just littered with 
stuff. Behold my stuff. You know, the whole thing. Um, and it was a ridiculous amount of, like, l low value loot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, he has ten thing like 10 sets of mint smashed silver silverware mm -hmm. like really yep you want to lug all that back without a cart <laughs> have you ever thought it was like annoying when you get like jewels gems i like the gems and jewels i like it i but, like it but um, i think it needs to be like i tend to not it's weird i tend to not like go get it like actually appraised or like trade it in for money or use it to buy stuff i just end up holding on well, to it you know? yeah and that's one of the the um tricks as a player too is to convert your money into mm -hmm. jewels because jewels are lighter yeah. than money mm -hmm. well it's um, be cooler to store jewels too in your you know if you pay if somebody off with a you, ruby if you're lucky you know? enough to be given like some sort of stronghold in the game or a hideout or someplace a fort yeah. you know a base of operations that you can stash all your stuff in we're going like full circle so speaking of forts and stuff that's a yeah. good um where you could re rewards yeah. with land and titles yeah, and things like that titles, which I mean, I, I remember giving your one of your players in the past campaign uh, a title and land, I believe. Tibbs? Tibbs. Yeah. I also wanted to retire him, though. So yeah, you wanted to retire him, so it was a perfect opportunity to reward this player. Yeah, so wanted. the character... I was going to die. Right? I wanted to retire the character, <laughs> and at the same time, we had just finished an arc where the um, the Duke, was it? Um, I don't remember his title. It was, it was some it was high a, up. Yeah, it was a... Duke or something. It was a Duke or something. We just finished know. like saving his daughter and he asked us what what do we all want and I wanted to retire the character and so the character was like, um, I want a townhouse servants and I want to be set up for life. <laughs> and it was like a secret, like they saved his daughter in secret. It was, yeah, it was like, he very... He, she was afflicted with uh, lycanthropy and she didn't want, or he didn't want any anybody mm -hmm. knowing about it because he was like secretly feeding like prisoners from the... <sighs> From the uh, keep dungeons to dark to his daughter to like yeah. satiate her urges, you know. And uh, anyway, uh, yeah. So he's like, "Well, okay, I'll give you the, I'll give you the title and the in the home and the servants." servants. And yeah, that was yeah. That's that how I retired my character. Yeah, I retired my character that way. Yeah, it was a perfect opportunity. But yeah, um, that can be a really interesting um, thing. It kind of depends on your structure of your campaign. The more open-ended your campaign is, um, where you don't have a definite end and you can go different different ways, mm -hmm. or you have an end but you're but you haven't designed it to stop there. You designed it just to start another adventure for the same characters. Yeah. Giving them land and a title and a keep is actually really good rewards. Yeah. But when you have a linear structured campaign that is going to end, mm -hmm. um, giving someone a keep. You know, halfway through is usually not that big of a deal because yeah. everybody knows that the game is going to end. But if you are the kind of um, uh, group that is going to have this ongoing campaign that continually goes and goes and goes and goes, yeah, giving someone that castle that they can repair up and and stuff is actually really really good. Mm. Yeah, especially if they want to take that um, campaign like those characters arcs into much higher levels you know 5e is a little bit weird you know because you kind of cap there mm -hmm. but uh if you want to take them into that i mean most campaigns don't run to 20th level anyway you know yeah I, it's 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 kind of sad but it's true yeah. most campaigns don't get that far my favorite levels in a campaign are like the one through eight mm -hmm. well and more like three through eight i think i don't like one, one, two one, as one, much. Th one through five uh one through six before you'd make that jump to seventh it's like uh that seems to be the easiest... I have an easier time planning adventures in that space. It's... Get back to the table! You should moonwalk back onto the screen. Uh, I don't know how to moonwalk. <laughs> it's true. Alright, All right. so... Uh, anyway, we're talking... We were talking about, like, our favorite levels were, like, the early levels. Mm -hmm. And I think that really stems from... Well, we've been exposed to those levels the most. I mean, a lot of campaigns, everyone starts at level one because you're learning mm -hmm. in early levels, but also you're more iconic monsters from fantasy tropes and from fantasy movies. Lord of the Rings is there. Your goblins, your orcs, your trolls. Yeah, yeah. you get to the higher end. Mm -hmm. Even like your mythology too, like your um, minotaurs, your yeah. serpents, things like that. Mm -hmm. yep. Like those are the monsters we know. Like when you say orc to some random person, um, mm -hmm. 
they usually know what you're talking about in some yeah. fashion, whether it's, it's World of Warcraft or Lord of the Rings or as unrelatable as monsters are. Yeah. We know them. Yeah, we know those monsters, right? But the higher level you get, the more interesting things you have to do. Aberrations and weird things. And, and the the little demons. De demons and devils and the hard stuff. Yeah. And not just hard stuff to fight, right? The hard stuff to run as a GM DM. Yeah. That's that's when the yeah, it's it's a little tough. So we like the lower levels. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes you can even throw a you can throw those higher level things in a lower level mm -hmm. campaign. You know, I mean, done in the past. You throw a dragon in. I mean, look at. Uh, I mean, this is maybe kind of taboo nowadays, but uh, fifth edition's Horde of the Dragon Queen. How many? I, I almost wonder how many players. I didn't play that through that campaign myself. I've read through the book and mm -hmm. decided I didn't think I wanted to run it. Um, I wonder how many players... Are you familiar with this, with this book at all? I have it. I think I cracked it like twice. <laughs> spoiler, if you're going to run it, I'm just going to say this right now, so it's a spoiler. Spoiler. Uh, yeah. Spoiler. Um, anyway, uh, like first session, you your, your party encounters a dragon. Oh, an yeah. A dark blue dragon. And it's like, uh, I wonder how many DMs, like new time DMs, <laughs> play in or something, uh, or even old time DMs, um, decided, you know what, we can we can put this dragon into combat because the party wanted to fight it, <laughs> and just roasted a party. You know. Yeah. Hey, do you remember the lich? The lich. Um, From four E that we. Yes. Okay. Um, the. Well, I got I got multiple memories of liches, but your four E campaign. Yeah, the first four E campaign. So one, speaking yeah. of putting monsters in a game that players aren't meant to fight. Um. I put a lich into a 4th edition campaign, mm -hmm. and it was the end of the second session, so the first little mission that they had to do, mm -hmm. and basically they come into the bar to come talk to their gnome. Yeah. Uh, oh, by the way, yeah. for a premise, what level did we start at? Really, really low. Yeah. I want to say it was like, not even 3, maybe yeah. it was 3. I think we started at 3. Yeah, 3. Um, that's a level 3 situation so, if I've but ever heard the of situation <laughs> yeah but, but here's the thing yeah. they weren't meant to fight it mm -hmm. okay um so they come back into town they come into the tavern and they're gonna go meet their boss and get paid for their mission and their boss is being held up by his neck by this um <clears throat> figure with the black cloak with the hoods down full skeletal you know mm -hmm. head going on and everything and um in the it was a lich wizard that I had built in 4E, and he does the whole person, and everyone's you know held, and kills their employer because the employer wouldn't cough up with information, and he leaves. And that's supposed to be like introduction to the big bad guy. He's just so overwhelming powerful at right now, and he doesn't even care about you. He cares about this information, and you know what he's looking for, and he leaves. Well, I had two players like. You know, we still have our dailies. I think we can take them. And I'm like, were you, are you freaking kidding me? Long story short, that didn't turn out very well. Um, <laughs> I mean, it, just, what would you, if you're faced, you're a party of adventurers and you walk into a place and there's a lich sitting there doing, you know, horrible things to your employer. But like, you already casted a spell that you def definitely beat you. Well, yes. He yes. held you. But <laughs> my, my statement stands, what would you do as a party of heroes? I mean, yeah. Damn it! And you did. Yeah. You did just flay your employer. I don't care if I'm level one. I'm going after that damn lich. Yep. Nope. He might. Yeah. Yeah. He's de most definitely going to kill me. But my. But the 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 uh, the crazy you know horned up bard that we have in the party is going to sing my songs till the end of time. Yeah. 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 No, you guys chased the lich down until you guys figured out you couldn't kill it, and then you had to run away from the lich as it tried to kill you. It was pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I played a, uh, you know, we're getting into stories now. I played, like, the most generic, boring human fighter. <laughs> Named Ben. Named Ben. Straight out of the 4th uh, edition player's handbook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two ends, so it's exotic, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I remember I wanted, like, my, I think my goal was to get a pony, and I wanted, like, a cask of ale I could carry around my pony, and like, that was my, I never got to that, but I wanted that. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, we really need to talk. We need to, we need to do like a fourth edition episode. We get a little bit more oh, subscribers. So if you guys can help us get some more subscribers, we want to get some four four e action going on. 
I we liked Forge. I liked Forge. Um, I liked it a lot. I want to talk with people about Forge. I want to try to find really someone local that just hates Forge. Just hates Forge. And I don't want yeah. to like be. I don't want it to be an like a yelling <clears throat> match, but I want to find someone <clears throat> local that really hates Forge, and I would like yeah. to bring them on, and we just want to discuss it. Yeah. You know, maybe yeah. run them through an encounter or two. Yeah. You know. Um, if you're one of our listeners, if you if you want to talk 4E and you hate 4E, even if you like 4E, uh, yeah, hit us up in the comments, uh, message us, whatever, because uh, I want to have like a we want to break. I want to have a real conversation. We want to know what you actually hated about yeah. 4E. Yeah. And we're not going to get into more, any more of that because that's yeah. the good part of the discussion. I don't want to lay the terms out for you. I want you yeah, to set them. We, we, won't, we won't hit our points. I think you and I probably disagree on a few things in 4E. Yeah. I, I spent most of my time in 4E behind the screen. I would say not very much as a player. Me as well. And I would say um, we should probably... I'm not, not nearly as much time as you behind the screen. But I think we probably line up on a lot of stuff. So we, we definitely want some opposing viewpoints. We want to know why... It was bad for a lot of people, and we understand a yeah. lot of bad points to it. But so we, we want to we want to get your take on it. An interesting little segue here. Four um, E actually influenced the way that I give out treasure now, mm. which is now actually I'm looking at it right over there. Yeah. These magic item cards. You want to grab those? Sure. Yeah. Um, because of the way Four E did some stuff. Um, I think that's why these exist, honestly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, because I, wish I started more... making these personally in 4E. Um, because 4E had all those, you could, all the powers had like the, you could print them out in a card side, size of a card. Mm -hmm. And, um, they, all the magic items also you could print out like a little playing card. And so what I did is I went and grabbed a whole ton of the um, free discarded Yu-Gi-Oh cards that were at the card shop. The ones that had like the equipment and had like all like the cool looking daggers and swords but there were crap cards and nobody wanted them. I took them and I would put them on one side and then on a, with a clear sleeve I would put the stats on the other side. And I would make a stack of them for the equipment that I wanted to give out during the campaign. I would just make a stack. And then when they would search the body, I would just shuffle up and I would throw a card down. Whoever just slapped it and grabbed it, that's who could, gets, got to read it out. And so because of 4E started having those little easy printout cards, that's why I started making them. And then they, there are magic item cards now you can buy. And so I feel like because of 4E, we have these. <laughs> I want to save this question. I should save this question. I want to ask you, though. Like, do you think 4E is ever going to... Uh, do you think it's ever gonna have a place again as like a RPG with a light tactics element to the combat? Nope. <sighs> it's it's sad. sad. <laughs> you know, I, it wasn't even hesitation. Because like now that you know like the rules nope. of five E, like I feel like it would be really hard. Like if we wanted to sit down and go go back and just say, okay, we're gonna just run like a short like five session four E campaign. Oh, I could pick it up, no problem. Well, you could pick it up, no problem. But yeah. I feel like it would just be like. Do you think it would be? Hard to to enjoy? Or do you think it would be like a... Oh, no, I would or enjoy do, it. Or do you think it would be like a... I loved the like um, a, uh, the at-will um, encounter-based, yeah. daily-based spell uh, spells and skills. I loved those mm -hmm. things. That was a great... I almost feel like 5e's gotten like a little too simple. Oh, it was, but... I, I missed 3.5. But the, the big thing about 5e is um, they really started simple. Yeah. And then... Well, they're that, slowly releasing more content. To, I, I think it's smart though too because you're not. I mean, it's good for new players, and you're also trying to drag. You're you're trying to pick at like the older like first and second edition players that may be interested now because D and D's become so mainstream. It's becoming more mm -hmm. known and popular. Um, more people are playing now. So do you think maybe that was like part of their intention was to try to get some of the old blood back into the. No, I think... I mean, there's the diehards that never stopped playing. Yeah. You know? I think a big problem... Uh, this is kind of, a, kind of a crazy way to... Crazy talk to go we're, on, but... Well, we're going down that road. We're going down that road. Yeah. Okay, so... I feel like 5e, like you said, was targeted at the older audience of D&D. &D mm -hmm. And as a new intro point. I feel like 4e was targeted at, like, the video game 
It was. Playing. It was. Before. And that's why everyone complained about, oh, this is just well on tabletop. I'm like, mm. is I'm that a bad it. thing? I mean, not necessarily, guys. This, yep. It's... We gotta save some of this for the yeah, for that episode, uh, but... I wanna go into for you so bad? Fuck. That's... Yeah, I'm censor that one. Do I... I love the books. I love the 4E books. I love the art. Uh, art was awesome. I love the way it's laid out. I love the, how they put tactics in for yeah. monsters. I still reference that stuff. Yeah. We'll no. save some of this. Oh, oh stop God. it. Stop I know, it. I just want to talk about 4 So 5E oh, yeah. was definitely geared towards bringing back the old audience and trying to... I want to say recoup from the 3.5 Pathfinder fiasco that happened. So when I say fiasco, so 3.5 was, it was rules bloated, but it was a lot of fun. And there was, I don't know how many books, official books were for 3.5. And there were mm -hmm. so many unofficial, like the third party books for 3.5. It was ridiculous. Like people's gaming libraries could, were just just massive and then when the fourth edition thing started um pathfinder which everybody at the time joked was 3.75 um was the other verge because it basically kind of left off where 3.5 did yeah um and and doing a arguably a better job oh yeah 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 most people mm -hmm. would say it'd be more balanced and with less a different blown. with a different style but same, but, <laughs> but, they, but they, especially with this, I, I haven't looked at the rules for that. I've tinkered with the rules, and I don't own any of the books, but I've I've uh, looked at the quick start stuff. And but uh, the second edition of Pathfinder looks like they they kind of really got three point five on like a solid solid spot now. Yeah, um, I'd be interested to look at that. But. So I feel like fifth edition was, um, hey, look, mm. we're kind of three point five again, but not really. Mm. You know, come on back. Yeah. The whole at will thing is gone. We realized that you didn't like the, you know, the at will Util stuff. Utilities you and you didn't want to play that way. We understand. Come on back. It, that that part was a little weird for me. Yeah. Because it didn't feel like. I mean, we yeah we know why for it for for you was was made. I still like it, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those those kind of things threw a lot of those like traditional D and D players off because that's yeah. not that was not what D and D was. Yeah. You know, that's. There, there wasn't, yeah, That's that That was all video game stuff, which a lot of, you know, it's not to say that you you have to choose between video games yeah. and, and tabletop. What's funny is when I ran 4E um, for public games, um, my, I want to say out of every 10 players that I ran through different games, nine of them would be brand new players to D&D, &D, and only one of them would be a, re a player that has played before. Because like, people just, there was just this gut reaction from Old players like mm -hmm. forty socks. Just well, like when I when I met you, like the the group I was playing with in three point five, like moved away, and so I was basically started picking. I picked up forty mm -hmm. and started running games for some of my friends that had not played who wanted to play. And so I was I was running games for for new players all the time, and uh, that's when you know I met you and got into your campaign. And then after that, I was like, well, now I'm, after I moved away from from town I started just running games for friends yeah. so and uh, yeah it's it always starts with somebody has to DM and run for players that yeah <laughs> I've never played before yeah. yeah thankfully now I'm in a our gaming group has a lot of people that run games but mm. for the longest time the only way I would get a game is if I wanted to run one because yeah. I was mm. nobody else wanted to DM yeah. well we're kind of blessed with the group that we got now, um, and I know, so, like, we all kind of try to run games on our own too. We we'll try to, yeah. Yeah. Um, but if, like, hear me out. If you're in, if you're in your own group, and you have one dedicated DMGM who always runs the games, like, I, I'm just gonna say, start passing that that role around. Like, everybody should be running games. Yeah, and there's some you people know, that don't want to give it up. Though. Some some people don't. Some people want to yeah hog the DM spot, but some people like like I. I I mean, I'm sure you do the same way. Get exhausted sometimes. Like you yeah. run, you run a campaign, you want to break them up like a character. Yeah. Let somebody else take. Which is why we have kind of a sweet spot with our group. And uh, but yeah, if if you're like that, if you if you're the DM and you and you want to break, it's, somebody else in the group should at least try it out. Mm -hmm. You know, because I mean, if you're a DM GM, you know just how rewarding and awesome that role is. It's awesome. I. I enjoy running games more than I enjoy playing them 
and I enjoy yeah. playing in games. Yeah, um, especially when you're when you run a successful session, like you you get done at the end of the night, you're like, I think that went well. <laughs> you're like, I think you know, did everyone yeah. did everyone have fun? It's like I think I think so. You know, mm -hmm. then you're kind of like, okay, well I can go to bed all right. You know. Um, yeah, everybody should be experiencing that at the table. Um, it shouldn't be, you know, it's a, it's a game. If you if you want to be the only person running and everyone's okay with that, it's awesome. But, yeah, if you're a player and you haven't run a game, try running a game because it's... It is a lot. I mean, it's, it's, it's awesome. fun. Like, even yeah. just running, a, like, a simple, like, do baby steps. Mm -hmm. um, like, just, look, just run, run an encounter. See, like, hey, guys, you know... Do you guys want to just do a series of encounters so I can kind of get my feet mm -hmm. wet with like the game management and stuff? Oh yeah, don't you know? don't definitely don't start with a campaign. <laughs> start yeah. with, well, start, some start, people do though. Start, some people do start with a uh, one shot or like a, a short three like plan out like a three session little campaign. Mm -hmm. Like first session starts out the story, third session concludes it all. Um, do do one of those things and get your feet wet doing that because uh, yeah, running a campaign can be just taxing, especially if you know. If you got other stuff going on, yeah. it can be rough. But so where were we? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, we're uh, we've been going on a tangent for some time. Oh, so. I don't know if we can get back. Probably not. We were doing rewards to begin with, but I think we're long past that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah. If you guys want to talk about four E, <laughs> <laughs> we really want to talk about four E. We want to do a four E session. There's somebody out there. But we're not going to do a four E session. Uh, a four E. You know, episode until we have uh, some more people interested in talking mm -hmm. about 4th edition. So, yeah, let us know. Uh, yeah, this should be a... So, um, since we're just on randomness, mm -hmm. um, one of my biggest... <laughs> this is kind of D&D, kind of not related. One of my biggest pet peeves is you see this on D&D groups online, like Facebook groups and stuff. And it's like, guys, I really want to run, like, a Western adventure. How would I convert that to D&D? &D? Or, I really want to run this space exploration kind of like Star Trek. How would I do that in D&D? &D? And I'm like, there are other systems out there, guys, that are designed for those things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah. don't have to I, I take D&D yeah. &D and just smash it yeah. into all these different holes. Yeah, you see it all the time online. Oh, man, yeah. it's horrible. Like, and they, they want to run the D, they want to use the D, what they know. They want you know, to use a D20. They want to use a D20 and they, they want like strength, charisma, wisdom, yeah. and you know, but dex, whatever. Yeah, it's not the best system. And if, if you're only familiar with playing D&D &D and you haven't explored with the other game systems, you should be delving out there because there's some great stuff. Mm -hmm. There's some really simple ones, there's some complicated mm -hmm. ones. I mean, yeah, yeah um, it's fun. I, I, always, I always enjoy uh, playing a new game, you know. Yeah. Especially if I don't have to try to run it. <laughs> like, <laughs> like uh, we played Paranoia uh, a while back. Oh yeah, that was you can really see, interesting. You can check it out on our Facebook. I think it's still on there. But yeah, um, yeah, that was a very interesting one. That was a lot of fun as a player. I was just like, dude, everybody's. If you're not familiar with Paranoia, like everybody's got like a secret kind of mission to, to yeah to to do, and it's basically you're all you're all like kind of the same team except for at the end there's like one winner kind of right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, very fun. It's it almost it's it's like an RPG with a board game element. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Um, maybe we'll do that again in the future. <laughs> uh, I would like I would love that. Yeah. So. To, you know, to it, the whole you know, <laughs> the whole smashing things into it too. Like so, when I say. It, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. I don't know if that's gonna come up or not. Apparently, my fantasy football team sucks this year. Um, <laughs> I didn't just, play this year. Uh, I get I get roped into it every year yeah. by some of my, my in laws, but um, I can't believe that went off. The... <laughs> so going back to the whole how D and D is not a realistic campaign, one thing it doesn't do very well is um, combat that should be short. So guns. I I understand there's a gunslinger mm. class out there now and there's stuff like that. Yeah. But and even Five E's got the. I mean, uh, like, uh, in the books. Oh, in the books, the, yeah, it has, has the like guns. Lock, yeah, the footlocks. Yeah. So, but, but here's the thing. If you don't think it's realistic getting shot by an arrow a dozen times, imagine, in, imagine playing a class where you shoot somebody with a pistol a dozen times and have to reload and shoot yeah. them again. And like, Plus, why would you want to have a footlock <laughs> pistol anyway, like, when you could just have a bow? 
Yeah. Doesn't make any sense, does it? That's Maybe weird. pirate swag. I mean, it's cool because yeah, it's pirate swag. You know, pirate swag. Yeah. Pirates, you know, running around yeah. with bows or running around, you know, yeah, you never really see bandoliers, like crossbows. Maybe yeah, but um, yeah, there's just something weird about like something weird about guns in D and D, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> I don't think they belong. People yeah, are gonna argue yeah. to me big time about that. How they? Oh yeah, you're just tons you, of I settings mean, you with guns. It, you could make a set. You could make it work, but it's just I don't seems, feel like it seems a little weird to have like elves, dwarves. And guns, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Although dwarves, I think, like if you, you know, think about like World of Warcraft, like dwarves are cool with guns. Yeah, you know? but also still a little weird. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I mean, I'm a big fan of Token, and I don't want my dwarves with guns. Okay, I, I'm I sorry. Want them with, I, I want them in the with same axes. boat. I want them with the axes, and you know what? Hobbit movies, they're awesome. Not my kind of dwarves. I'm just saying. I want like, like. Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings, yeah. like Gimli, straight up dwarf, no funny business going on, no weird stuff. Yeah, and give him an axe. And, and I'm halfway between that and halfway between uh, old Warhammer, mm. because I like my orcs, big, mean, and green, mm. and with talk like soccer hooligans. Or oh, yeah. you know, like that's why I like my orcs. I don't like them as the sniveling. You I know, do, I do like my orcs. Uh, you know low to the ground and feral and or yeah you're good you know i wasn't even a big fan of like tokens like urukai you know the urix it's like that kind of like i get it i get it i'm a, I, I love tokens work but it's yeah. like i want like like mines of moria like orc goblins yeah because like goblins are like orc kind in that that yeah in that yeah that world but uh, that's what I want. They've got a troll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did like their trolls. Yeah. I also like uh, D&D's trolls. It's my kind of troll, too. Mm -hmm. but, um, different trolls. <laughs> so, anyway, we're probably long past uh, go time, huh? Yeah. So, right. maybe we should just cut yeah. it yeah, before that's... we get too off topic and you guys yeah. don't want to finish the episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Boy. Hey, uh, hit us up if you want that 4E episode. Yeah, if you want to be the 4E... Yeah, because we were... Because we, we'll end up being the 4E defenders. If you want to be the person that's trying to raid yeah. on our parade. We do got lots to say. We might not have a lot to say about rewarding players, but we do got lots uh, to say about 4E D&D. We're open to guest spots, too, if there's a different topic mm -hmm. that you're passionate about. Yeah. Um, one thing that I would like to bring up in an, a future episode, if anybody local is interested in talking about it, is um, convention gaming. Mm, yeah, um, I've cut my that. teeth a lot on no, small conventions, but running games at conventions and stuff like that. And uh, Nick had the opportunity um, last year to cut of my teeth, yeah, as well yeah. at uh, Fargo Game Fest. Um, awesome decision, best, yeah, best impulse decision I've made as a yeah. GM. And um, if somebody else that runs convention games or has opinions on it want to come down, like talk about how they do it, advice, prep work, things like that. I would like to do that in an episode coming up. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. All right. All right. See you guys. Bye. Bye.